Good evening, dear participants. I am Candida Fankin, and I will be your host for today's program. On behalf of Indian Academy Degree College Autonomous, the Department of Psychology, in association with Jagru, Empower Yourself, I welcome all of you and our speaker, Ms. Veena Jen, to the webinar, Come Student Skill Development Program on Positive Wellbeing. Before starting any program, it is our tradition to seek the blessings of God. Hence, I call upon Ms. Ansu from BA final year to invoke blessings with a prayer song. Gananaya Gaya Ganadevadaya Ganadikshaya Dimahi Gunasharidaya Gunamantitaya Guneshanaya Dimahi Gunaditaya Gunadikshaya Guna Pradeshaya Dimahi Yegatandaya Vakratundaya Gauri Tanaya Dimahi Gejeshanaya Bala Chandraya Sri Ganeshaya Dimahi Yegatandaya Vakratundaya Gauri Tanaya Dimahi Gejeshanaya Bala Chandraya Sri Ganeshaya Dimahi Thank you, Ansu. I now request Ms. Puma Shankriji, Department of Psychology, to officially welcome the audience. Good evening, everyone. A 24-year-old boy, seeing out from the train's window, shouted, Dad, look at the tree are going behind. Dad, smiled, and a young couple sitting nearby, nearby looked at the 24-year-old childish behavior with pity. Suddenly, he again exclaimed, Dad, look, the clouds are running with us. The couple could not resist and said to the old man, why don't you take your son to the good doctor? The old man smiled and said, I did, and we are just coming from the hospital. My son was blind from birth. He just got his eyes today. Every single person on the planet has a story. Don't judge people before you truly know them. The truth might surprise you. Stop being afraid of what can go wrong and start being positive about what could go right. With this note, I would like to welcome each one of you. A very good evening to each one of you present here. Respected principal, Dr. E. Zerum Xavier, respected guest speaker, Ms. Veena Jean, Ms. Deepa, head of the department humanities, faculty members from other institutes, faculty members from Indian Academy Group of Institutions, and my dear students. A warm welcome to all of you for the six days web series on positive mental, well, mental well-being organized by the Department of Psychology in association with Jagru, Empower Your Inner Self. I once again welcome all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Uma ma'am. Our beloved principal, Dr. E. Jerome Xavier, is not able to, pre to be present here. Therefore, he grants his wishes, uh, he grants his wishes in absentia. Before we go forward with the program, I would request and I would request all of you to please turn off your microphone and your video. The forms will be given at the end of the session in the message box. And any one of you who has any questions for the speaker, you can put it in the message box. Also, the webinar is only in English. We are not able to do it in any other languages. 
before we start with the speaker, I would like to present a video on Ms. Veena Chen. According to their psychosocial needs. Veena Jain is a keynote speaker, counseling psychologist, and coach who enjoys working with people according to their psychosocial needs. She has considerable experience working with people in diverse business environments and has experienced human dynamics and behaviors very closely. While she was working at the peak of her career with an IT major, a personal experience led her to pursue counseling and laid the foundation of Jagrut. Jagrut is a unique online platform to train and empower people with an objective, empower your inner self. Jagrut offers online training to self-empowerment and counseling services like premarital, relationship counseling, and various programs to empower today's Xenex, adolescents, and young adults. She uses various integrated and eclectic approach of counseling, which helps her tailor the session's basis, one's needs, and experiences. She is a trained NLP and EFT practitioner, uses EI tools and other therapeutic interventions like CBT, art and play therapy, psychodrama to bring the aha and wow moments in people's life. She is presently supporting the counseling and training needs of Indian Air Force, direct taxes regional training institutes, educational institutes and IT majors. Let us see. I now request Ms. Veena Jen to be present with the present to be ready with the presentation. Once again, I request each and every one of you to please turn off your microphones and your video and to avoid presenting in between the presentation. Any questions you have, please direct it in the chat box. And at the end of the session, there will be a feedback link. That is only where you have to fill it up. Thank you, ma'am. Over to you.
I welcome our principal who is here to join us now. Sir, would you like? Yeah, I just wanted to check if I'm audible. Hello. Sir, you are audible. Please audible. Kindly go ahead. I will. I will talk at the end of the program. Don't worry. But ma'am, okay, ahead. sir. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. I don't want to interrupt in between. Let's you know. Please go ahead. Let the flow of thought be there. Then uh, maybe towards the end I'll speak around four o'clock. All right, sir. Sure. Go ahead. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. So just wanted to check if I'm audible. Yes, ma'am. You're audible. Okay. Okay, so, uh, yeah. ma'am. Thank yes, you. Sir. Thank you for uh, thank you for accepting and giving it as a series of the, you know lectures. So kind of you. Thank you so much for the opportunity, sir. I know, although you belong to science department, still you have taken special effort, you know, to talk and then and share, you know, counts on various areas. So so kind of you. I'm sure the students, you know will be profiting out of your uh, sharing and it, it's always like a personal guidance i think right. you know, it will help their mental well-being so thank you yeah. very much thank you and, so much sir and yeah. go ahead man. okay thank you okay so um, welcome to one and all for the uh, series of presentation and uh, today's topic is emotional well-being so let's understand what we mean by emotional well-being and uh, i have made this presentation interactive so i would be asking all of you to you know parallelly do these exercises as well so that there is definitely a relative understanding and it is just not you know you are sitting into a presentation and not uh, taking any uh, learning uh, away from this okay so let's review our mental health the first thing is my question to all of you would be and if you could all make a note in your phone or you know a writing pad whatever is comfortable with you the question is how many times last week you had emotional breakdown okay was it uh, just once it was twice somebody may have emotional breakdown on a daily basis Okay, someone may not experience emotional breakdown and someone may, will experience emotional breakdowns frequently. Okay, so this question basically asks you to check if you had emotional breakdown, if yes, how many times it was and do you know that you are having emotional breakdown or not? Many a times people say that, you know, that uh, because I'm happy, I'm crying right uh, maybe i could not stand to the news you know when it was flashed that sushant rajput is no more okay and after that i kind of uh, feeling overwhelmed i'm not able to carry on with my emotional state and i'm breaking down frequently whenever you know his uh, uh, photo gets splashed on my phone or uh, in news or in various channels okay or it could be as simple as the fear of this pandemic okay so there could be various reasons around emotional breakdown right so try and identify if you had any if yes when was it and if there is a subsequent reason i'll give you 30 seconds to do this And once somebody is, if, if you have done, just give me a thumbs up so that I can proceed further. Okay. The next one would be, once you have listed down that yes, you had emotional breakdown and the frequency of it, can you now close your eyes and list down one negative and one positive emotions you have experienced in last week. Okay. So for example, last week was, uh, you know, Raksha Bandhan. Okay. So probably I would say that 
my uh, i was uh, having lot of uh, you know positivity i was looking forward to meet my uh, brother i was looking for a family get together and i was literally feeling very high okay but because of uh, a case in our uh, lane the entire lane was sealed and then suddenly i was you know filled with negativity that you know did it had to happen today and i really felt bad i was not able to you know uh, bounce back uh, and uh, accept the fact that okay it is for my precaution for my uh, preventive measure bbmp has come and sealed the uh, lane okay so what happened is uh, though i was experiencing positivity a sudden event which was not in my control made my mood go bad okay so the positive emotion could be excited i was looking forward to meet my brother okay and uh, negative emotion was you know i was feeling vulnerable that oh my god i cannot go now i was getting disappointed right so you need to identify what were the emotions you were experiencing in the last week whether it was highly positive or it was highly negative now this specific exercise while i am talking to you and you are listening to me it will be great if you could uh, you know start listing down as well the reason why i am asking you to do this is many of us we fail to list our emotions whenever somebody asks us how are you we just say fine we just say good we say i am doing good i am fine thank you it is awesome that's it nothing more than that so it is very important for us to identify and label our feelings okay and once you get into this habit your brain starts comprehending your feelings properly and get associating your feelings to a specific emotion so remember brain only understands emotions it doesn't understand whatever we talk so assuming that you have done this let's go to the next question what stressed you out the most last week okay and i'm just keeping one last week window for all these assessment because it becomes really tough for somebody to take into the 30 days or last 3 months into account and uh, you know get into evaluation of uh, when i was low when i was high but last week data is you know very fresh into our memory so what are the things which stressed you out like for example when i said i was stressed that i cannot go anymore i was stressed that okay because i can't go anymore i have to cook at home right i was also stressed that you know uh, whatever preparations i had done for raksha bandhan will go for waste okay so what i'm doing is i am trying to give you a relative context to explain all these pointers so that you know it it settles in your brain and you are able to relate whatever i'm talking to so i could give you the listing of what were my stresses so similarly if you all could identify what were your stresses okay so let's give a pause here and let's wait if you all could identify what were your stresses and this exercise is not only for students everybody even the faculty members who are attending the presentation if you could if they can do the exercise it will give them an insight as well right so next understand do you experience mood swings right now this is a very important uh, exercise which i want every one of you to do because what happens is let's understand mood swings you know in a day you can be happy you can be sad but then it can, it can also be that you are sad and then you become happy right and you can develop frustrations okay and you could be worried and you could be you know excited again about something so what is happening is i'm going through the phase of uh, the day and my mood depends upon the situation the people around right so if that is the case then my mood swing is normal and i'm in control of my expressions now what happens in mood swings which is clinical or psychological is you suddenly feel happy 
suddenly you feel that no you should not be happy okay and you start experiencing sad and when you are experiencing sad you are thinking you know you're feeling low you're feeling lethargy you are not able to bounce back you don't feel like doing anything you just lie down on the bed and you keep looking at the uh, uh, ceiling okay so here what is happening is you are not able to bounce back from your feelings your emotions so if that is the case if somebody is experiencing mood swings right it is high time that it needs to be addressed the next one is do you feel that your happiness is short term okay when i do counseling i get many cases wherein people say that we know whenever i feel happy something happens within around me and i you know my happiness is gone okay somebody says that i people around me cannot take my happiness okay they do something to again you know disturb me and my i i sink back right so they say that or they will say that some event happens whenever i am happy the day i am happy something will happen bad right so they are associating happiness with some negativity so if you are again experiencing that your happiness doesn't stay longer and it you know bounces back to unhappy state or frustrated state or a state of worry then it is very important that each one of you get into the introspection as to why you are not able to remain happy okay so here i tell people that consider that your body is a bus right so who is driving this bus am i driving or i have appointed a driver from outside to drive this bus now if i am the driver of the bus then it is my choice whether i should be happy or i should be sad but if i have given the driving uh, responsibility to somebody else then what will happen is the other person will have my remote control in their hand and when they say veena sad veena will turn into sadness veena you know go frustrated i will become frustrated what i'm trying to say here is please remember that i have the control of my body similarly each one of you who is listening to this presentation have control of your body so you should decide should i be happy or should i be sad should i allow my happiness to depend upon some external factor or my happiness is my internal feeling okay if you do these kind of introspections you will always be doing a quick mental health check on yourself to see whether you are on a positive side or you are you know your radar is uh, shifting towards negativity the next one is describe your mental health in one word now whenever i ask people this question people tell me that it is good it is bad it is awesome it is uh, you know um, frustration right so similarly if you could define mental health for you in one word it will give me lot of insight as to what you are feeling how do you rate your mental health on a scale of 10 okay what exactly mental health means to you because we are so biased about our mental health that hardly we give any uh, you know importance to it we are only worried about our physique right we are only worried about how we look to others we only worry about you know investment into the physical health but we do not do these investment on our mental health we consider it as a cost we also consider it as something which you know should not happen to people so here i tell people that consider you that your brain is an organ and an organ can also fall short of certain chemicals and thereby it can have disorders do not associate brain as mind mind is completely different right brain is an organ so if at all you have disorder it creates disorder in your thinking capacity right okay so understand this difference and build acceptance 
and thereby build acceptance in the community that it's okay to have mental health issues it's okay to seek you know support for mental health issues it's okay to invest into mental health uh, you know positive uh, well being now once you have got all these answers i would now review all of you to uh, rate your mental health on a scale of 10 now whenever i have uh, done this exercise for a group of say 50 to 150 kind of a stage i have got 46% as an average where people have said that their mental health scale falls below 5 okay that means that they have built an awareness to understand and uh, also classify their well being of the mental health so that is the reason i am not asking all of you to share it with me i am asking all of you to do it personally so that what happens is you know your data right and basis of this you can see how to go about it now let's understand the importance of emotional well being the first thing is mental and emotional well being is essential to overall health positive mental health allows people to realize their full potential that means if i am happy okay i would be spreading happiness i would be using my own resources with complete uh, you know uh, uh, potential i would not be feeling that i am not unresourceful we will be able to cope with the stresses of life okay so i would be able to look at the stresses in a different way okay in a positive way and probably try to uh, identify solution for all the stresses in my life okay and when i do this i would have a very you know high productive work and i can do meaningful contributions to my family to my community to my society whatever now the other aspect of mental health is to a very large extent related to our childhood so early childhood experiences have lasting measurable consequences later in life therefore fostering emotional well being from the earliest stages of life helps build a foundation for overall overall health and well being what i mean by this is uh, as a psychologist okay i define 0 to 8 years as the meditative phase of a children now why i say that as uh, because 0 to 8 years children do not have a logical mind right i'll give you an example when we are small okay and let's say uh, i am i've just started to walk and i fall okay and i get get hurt what happens our parents would have you know beaten the floor and they would have said that okay i'll hit the floor this floor has hurt you and i'll hit it you be quiet and we feel very happy about it okay that whoever has hurt me got punished and we are fine again okay a very simple and very you know relative example which actually happens in every home so here what is happening is if you do it now you will laugh at your mom your granny and say that i know you are making fool of me but that time we do not consider that they are making fool of us right why because we do not have logical mind during 0 to 8 years now when we do not have logical mind whatever we see whatever we hear whatever we observe that forms the blueprint of our life so if you did not had a very good childhood for any reasons okay it will show its impact in terms of your behavior in terms of your thinking in terms of how you handle a situation right everything gets impacted so this presentation or this particular workshop would also allows you to introspect your life and see where what mistakes have happened and trust me anything which is gone wrong can be reversed okay by this i am not saying that i can reverse your memories if anybody tells you also that you know join my program and i can free you from bad memories they are talking nonsense okay nobody can do that neither a neurologist can do it 
okay what we largely do is we make peace with your bad memories so that you are able to cope up you are not able to uh, you are not allowing those memories to impact you okay so do a small introspection about your early childhood next one anxiety mood which is you know depression and impulse control disorders are associated with higher probability of risk behaviors so many of uh, you know college going students when they get addicted to tobacco alcohol other drug uses or get into risky sexual behaviors it has an impact on your brain chemicals okay in case you have intimate partner there is a you know a family violence and uh, uh, acute disorders like you know obesity diabetes cardiovascular disease or had a premature death then all these causes mental health issue i'll give you an example here of my father okay uh, he had a heart attack right and he was he's an he was into air force and he always you know throughout his life he cycled from the you know station to the office so it could be around you could say that 2 to 2 and a half kilometers of cycle which would be around 5 kilometers a day so he was a very you know he always felt that he has to keep healthy and because of his duties he never got time to get into gym and all that so he used to cycle okay now this person gets heart attack right and he gets into a stage of depression that i don't drink i don't smoke i don't do this yet i got a heart attack how can that be possible so i am trying to give you a relative example to understand how cardiovascular diseases also impacts your mental health okay uh, people with diabetes when they get when they are not able to get into lifestyle management okay when they ignore okay so diabetes and obesity are actually metabolic disorders right so that means your metabolism is again guided by you know your wired body so somewhere something is going wrong within your body and that is where you are developing this look at an obese person they will not be happy looking themselves into the mirror so it again leads to issues like you know bulimia anorexia and uh, you know body image you feel shame about yourself lot of these things happen so what i'm only trying to tell students here is anything and everything the way we relate to ourselves the way we internalize things okay has an impact on our mental health now let me give you a very quick example and i want all of you to do okay just close your eyes for a second and think about a cut lemon slice okay right and then just note down your feeling you would see that somebody may feel it sweet somebody may feel it sour someone will feel it as tangy someone will say lemon someone will say it as a perfect circle somebody will say a slice of lemon okay each one of us will look at that slice the picture which i gave it to you in a different way okay that means that we all perceive things the way we want so it is very important that there is a congruency between our outer and inner self if that is not there okay we get into the journey of mental imbalance right now look at these words which are there on the slide uh, which relates highly to the mental health okay i have tried to capture as many as possible but then this is not the only set of words which can uh, you know relate to mental health there are immense number of words okay so the ones which i have put in bold okay these are ones which uh, you know hurts you deep within and takes you to the suicidal tendencies okay the other ones which are lighter okay they are your stepping stone towards the bad mental health okay like for example somebody is not able to manage failure you know they'll get they start experiencing sadness they will start cursing themselves of their uh, 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 you know preparations or attempt to the examination right when they feel that i'm out of control i'm not able to manage things when they feel isolated when you are stressed 
when you are disengaged right when you are ashamed of yourself or somebody it could be your friend it could be your uh, parents it could be uh, you know your intimate partner anyone right when you develop concerns for your relationship okay when you are scared or you have fear when you feel detached from uh, a, a specific thing okay when you feel that i am over committed okay so these are certain words which uh, you know uh, starts with the mental imbalance so whenever if if at all you all are experiencing any of these my only advice here would be that ask yourself a question what i think largely in a day and what are the kind of feelings i get throughout the day when you ask these two questions okay it will take you into an introspective journey to define these words and identify the situations if you are not able to then it is important that you take the support now let's understand how emotional well being impacts us so if i am emotionally balanced if i am emotionally strong if i have a higher eq okay then i have the ability to learn from okay i would look at trauma as trauma only a loss could be a loss okay it will not go beyond it to impact my emotional state right you would see that when we lose any of our dear ones there is a phase of grief right people who are actually experiencing this grief beyond a specific period get into depression right and these people need to be counseled on uh, you know grief management okay so when you have a good eq when you are emotionally sound you will be able to handle the trauma you will be also open to emotional experiences which could be good which can be bad okay you will have clear values and stronger character that means i would be very uh, you know uh, adamant about okay and i'm using this word adamant because values are very internal to ourselves okay so when i have a high eq i would be very clearly knowing that what are my value system and i will draw a line that till what line i can stretch till what line i can negotiate and then beyond that i would just say stop okay it will not affect affect me if i am having a loss right again if i have a good emotional well being then i will have low level of defensiveness now what i mean by low level of defensiveness is when somebody is pointing out mistakes or when somebody is giving me suggestion or when somebody is conclusive about something i will not project my defense mechanism to support myself or you to save myself i will be critical to their listening okay i will be optimistic i will have high self esteem and uh, i will be also having self realization that means uh, if something goes wrong i would be able to study what happened and if if at all there are any learning i will implement on me and basically you know trying to understand from the situation i'll be able to play to one strength because i'm well balanced person and when i'm talking to somebody i can gauge their strength and then i can play my communication accordingly or my you know whatever then i would get into passionate engagement then the fearful engagement or then the scary engagement or the engagement with a worry mind okay a questionable mind i will have meaning and purpose in life i would also have a positive and long lasting relationship and finally i would be in my autonomy mastery and competence so the conclusion of this slide will be i will have the balance between my inner and the outer self if my inner self says yes my outer self also says yes there is no difference of opinion between the you know the ideal self and the real self okay it will be in congruence now 
let's understand what are the various keys to emotional well-being so the first key of emotional well-being is using positive self talk what i mean by saying using positive self talk is i would talk positive to about myself to myself okay that means i would be using some affirmations i will be uh, you know do giving myself a pep talk okay i would be whenever i am experiencing a negativity i will talk to myself or have a mind dialoguing wherein i am trying to say that veena it is okay right and these kind of self talk will energize me i will remind uh, sorry remind yourself that you are a work in progress now this is very important pointer we cannot be a finished work okay and we can never be a finished work the time we assume that i have completed my education and i'm done you know you are you are actually into a state of dream you are miles away from the reality okay so when your parents say that you know after 10th you know 12 11 12 and they say that you will start working and then you do not have to study these are all wrong things okay they are all talking in fantasy right the when you start working let's say for example when i got into psychology okay i trust me students i'm studying almost every day whenever i have to give a presentation i look through so many ppts available so many you know youtube videos i go through so much of uh, documents do so much research and then come up and make up a slide right so studying never ends similarly yourself keeps evolving now i would like to quote here that a psychologist had proven okay that your body kind of becomes completely new every 11 years that means that our body also gets into the wear and tear so when our body is getting into wear and tear that means that my cells are also regenerating the old cells are dying so i am becoming a new pr- person right so i can always we should always consider that yes if i could not do this today what i can do how can i equip myself to address it tomorrow okay so consider that you are a work in progress you are not somebody's thought that somebody will paint you on the uh, you know sheet of paper and they say that okay i've created a masterpiece this is all fantasy then work towards your goals and dreams this is very important keep defining your goal and start pursuing your goals now recently i had done a workshop on vision board and i was amazed that you know there are so many people who do uh, workshops on goal management how to create goals how to use the smart technique and still there are people around who really do not know how to identify the goals if they are able to also they are not able to actually you know pursue that goals so i reprogrammed the entire uh, program into understanding the psychology behind your goals okay and then i am seeing beautiful vision boards being done okay so identify your goal start working towards it this gives you energy stay physically active it is very important to have the physical and mental balance if you do lot of physical exercise no mental exercise there is going to be problem if you do lot of mental exercise and no physical exercise there will be a problem again right so have a balanced approach get enough sleep and rest okay and specifically for your generation okay you people are kind of getting deprived of sleep okay because of long uh, you know uh, working hours long uh, phone hours movie hours so many things insta fb everything keeps you all you know awake throughout the night okay follow your body cycle respect your body spend time with your family and friends who energizes you okay this brings in lot of positivity eat a balanced diet okay now i had recently done a program on depression and while i was doing research i was amazed to find out a quote which said that 16% of people face depression because they are not eating or not taking right nutrition 
Now, can I just eat right to avoid this? Okay, it is as simple as that. So have a balanced diet because everything we eat has an impact on our metabolism. Talk about your thoughts and feelings, okay? And very often speak about it with your friends, speak about with your parents, speak about with your lecturers. And if you do not like being advised, stop approaching that person because, uh, uh, you know, everybody is talking from their frame of preference, right? So do not just keep overdoing things, approach the right person who could help you out. Do the activities you love. Okay, create a hobby. If you do not have one, right? And if you feel that I could only sleep and sleeping in is, is my hobby, please go ahead and sleep. Okay, um, care for yourself. It is very important to self, do, uh, you know, uh, self care yourself. Because if you, when we were young, we could expect people around us to look after us. But as we grow, you know, it has to be an independent thing, right? So, uh, for example, there is something which I would like to quote here uh, from uh, Sadhguru. Uh, he said very beautifully that, you know, take two dress. Okay, so if it is girls, take two kurtis or anything which you like to wear. And boys, shirt or t-shirt, anything. Okay, one of it, you just crumple it. And the other one, you neatly iron it. Okay, now for one hour you wear the crumpled t-shirt right and then just feel how you are feeling right think what you are thinking and try to introspect your mind and you will see that you're not feeling good okay there is something negativity which is around you know which is uh, uh, surrounding you right you are kind of becoming little careless right so then he says that now after an hour you go back you know wash your face and do all that and after that you wear an ironed shirt and then you see what you are seeing you think what you want to think okay and you will see the difference okay now this example was so very well placed that our mind actually doesn't like cluttered environment Right. So whenever it sees a cluttered environment, it kind of starts developing negativity. OK, so that is how very beautifully he explained about what is cluttering and decluttering. So take care of yourself. Keep learning things that interest you because it, uh, you know, challenges your brain. You kind of, you know, try to relate and store those information. So learn good and then give back to others. OK. If you could do something for others, it brings in immense positivity. Okay. Like, for example, when I started doing Jagrut's Learning Hour, okay, and I started it as a free webinar, you know, multiple door of opportunities opened for me in terms of counseling, in terms of coaching, in terms of training, in terms of, you know, people. And I have been meeting more and more people. Okay. Now, let's understand because it is the topic is all about emotional well-being. I felt it is very important for all of us to understand how a counselor and psychologist will help. OK, then having the biased opinion about themselves. OK, so what counselor and psychologist do is they identify your emotional spiral. Now, what I mean by identifying this emotional spiral is they identify the triggers. What is making you happy and how your happiness from happy to elated, you know, it grows. OK. And similarly, when you say sad, sad is basically a downfall of an emotion. So how your emotional actually goes down. They help you to identify your own problems and define them. OK, and trust me, whenever I have asked people that I want you to define your problem in one statement after listening to their, uh, you know, the stories, the problems, the issues, the challenges they have been facing, everybody have been able to do that. OK, so first allow them to talk. We allow them to uh, 
you know, counselors to speak. We listen to them, and then we say that, okay, now I have understood. You have spoken for thirty, forty minutes long. Now, if you could put your summarize your entire problem into one statement, okay, you would give a pause, and when you define your problem, you are actually there. What I mean by actually there is you actually know who is the who is causing this problem, what is affecting your mind. Okay, and that becomes a aha moment for the counselee as well as the counsellor. We help you develop insights about what is playing on your mind. Many a times we operate from uh, you know multiple uh, uh, things which keeps on going in our mind. Like like for example, when I'm uh, giving this presentation. i have a tape running in my mind that you know 5 o'clock my son has to write a test and he's small okay whether he has studied or not okay will i have to sit again along with him can he manage it what about the light because each one of us are aware that you know it rains in the evening so all these things are parallelly running in my mind now those these things may create worry in me or it may create uh, you know frustrations if actually light power goes okay so so i am aware of what is running in my mind many a times people are actually not aware of what is bothering them so when you are actually not aware of what is bothering you we are the people who help you understand what is actually disturbing you or disappointing you we help you with your therapeutic intervention to develop coping mechanism okay and trust me each of this whatever i am talking we are just the facilitator you are actually being guided and you are working on your own thing so you know at, at the end when i tell people that okay who identified the problem then the my counselor says i okay who identified the emotions they say i am identified the emotion right i took you through the therapeutic intervention who implemented it the counselor says i so they feel that okay i am the you know the energy box the empowerment is within me and i have been searching it all around okay so our job is basically to empower people to help themselves so we empower you to manage emotions sorry so i am done with uh, the presentation okay and i would now like to open myself for the questions and you all have to thank you ma'am Uh, i would now request uh, the participants if you have any questions you can unmute and ask the questions or else you can put it in the chat box uh, ma'am i need some help to understand how do i come out of this um ma'am you can go to your, uh, you can go to the screen and you can, there will be an option stop sharing or stop presenting okay. good afternoon ma'am yeah good afternoon Ma'am, uh, could you please uh, suggest some tips, particularly plus sixty years uh, academic faculty, how to take care of their kids in Corona days, particularly? How to take care of their their career, particularly in Corona days? There are some See. faculty who are doing, the, you know, the way working uh, even uh, plus sixty uh, years. So I am one among them. okay so um what we need to understand is uh two things here the first is our generation does not have experience about this pandemic okay we really do not know that something like this can happen okay we had no idea about this and we are seeing it for the first time we it uh, you know Uh, a, a 60 year old uh, sir here or me or uh, you know our student so because we are experiencing it for the first time there is lot of anxiety within us okay so i would like to um, quote here something which say which uh, of ratan tata which says that you know this is the year of survival okay so stop having expectations 
try to uh, live within the limitations okay and uh, uh, spend simple moments of happiness which you could you know uh, um, uh, associate it and on a later date to make yourself feel happy because this is the time like if if as as i am a working person i hardly get time with my children but then i am there with them okay it is a plus point and a minus point at various uh, factors but again as i said it is up to me whether i want to feel happy or sad about it okay so manage your anxieties do meditations to for your mental health do physical exercises as simple as surya namaskara for your uh, 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 physical uh, health uh, listen to good things switch off your tv do not look into these news okay a uh, lot of negativity gets spread through it okay and uh, just talk about uh, you know invest into yourself whatever hobbies you had right which you could not work on it for so long take that and start working on it okay ma'am thank you thank you welcome ma'am i would request you you can minimize the screen and then after huh, i just did it yeah i uh, could do it now then you can go to meet and then you can click stop sharing yes now we can it see okay yes yes all right Thank anyone you, else ma'am you can go to the chat there are uh, there is somebody who has given a question how negative emotions can be avoided okay uh, ma'am it will be good if someone can help me with questions because uh, yes, you know lot of questions are there on the screen yeah thank you so much okay so let's understand here one thing if you take our brain and take the primary emotions okay what are our primary emotions happiness sadness fear and then what's the last one we feel happy anger okay now all in this four emotions we just have one emotion which is positive rest all the emotions are negative what does it mean it means that our brain is oriented to think negative okay and that is where what happens is when we go through lot of these positive messages okay the uh, whatsapp may good morning positive messages and all that we are not actually able to make sense of those or we are not able to implement into our life for a long term because we feel that it is not relative right so this is where you all have to practice mindfulness this is where you each one of you have to keep asking those two questions what i'm thinking what i'm feeling okay it is here where you need to do lot of mental yoga to gain clarity of your mind right yes next question oh. ma'am okay ma'am the next question is by orku ditya uh, quoting mm. him saying you mentioned a metaphor of a person driving his own bus now talking in right. first person what if i am the one driving the bus but in my mind i have a couple of other people who are constantly criticizing my driving or trying to manipulate me into taking a different route hmm. perhaps okay. so that question right so again now tell me one thing if you are actually driving the car okay and you have a google map on and it shows that there are two uh, routes by which you can reach your destination one is smaller and the other has some traffic what will you do you will switch on to the fastest route right so here what did you do you looked at the google map and you looked at what is working in your favor okay in terms of saving the time and reaching the destination uh, before uh, you know without any hassle you took a positive impact and implemented it immediately right so it was again your decision to do it similarly when people around me are criticizing me why i am allowing their criticism to affect me that means i have also started criticizing me i have also started questioning my own issues okay and this happens with many of us because we are continuously being labeled by people around ourselves so if we start believing in the labels they say 
okay we will always be get into the state where i am allowing others to drive myself i am not allowing myself to drive myself okay hope that answers your question okay thank you ma'am uh, we will take another two or three questions more after that we will end the webinar due to time constraints sure. as well yes so the next question is how do you control extreme emotions and moodiness during this quarantine or lockdown okay so one thing we all have to understand is is quarantine helping us right is this pandemic the shutdown this lockdown you know being at home not able to do anything is it helping us if it is actually helping us okay then why we are not able to think positive what is the use of breaking the rules and gain getting on to the road or going for party and getting covid positive right so here i would like to bring in the self talk which you are having with yourself if you sit and talk about the benefits of these and it has kind of you know helped you manage your health then you shouldn't be thinking about uh, you shouldn't be having emotional breakdown the other thing here is the technologies are so advanced that though you are not meeting people physically there are options available wherein you could spend time with them online so why are we not taking advantage of these uh, technologies right so again i would say that our the way we think the way we perceive has an impact on ourselves okay so change your thinking change your thought process okay ma'am the next question uh, what is the difference between mood swings and emotional breakdown so emotional breakdown is you are frequently getting into bouts of crying okay you're not in your own control right uh, i i had a case where the time i used the word sad this girl used to start crying okay so that is emotional breakdown right and mood swing is you are getting hijacked into the you know the the spiral which is pulling you downward you are not in sync of your mind you are not able to bounce back so that's the difference between the two okay ma'am i'm going to read out the last two questions um, when someone demotivates you how do you deal with it why do you why are you allowing somebody to demotivate you why can't you trust your own capabilities look at this question is as what is demotivating me why cannot why i am not able to trust my own capabilities okay and when you look at this question from a different angle altogether you will understand where the problem is okay ma'am uh, the last question ma'am uh, can meditation be helpful in reducing thoughts per se negative thoughts in the mind for example as it's written in certain places that certain amounts of thoughts come to human mind and it can be helped through meditation so does yes, meditation med yeah so meditation actually helps in calming the mind okay meditation is not a tool to control your thoughts okay please remember this what you could all do is what we do actually in meditation is when you see meditation is always related to breathing okay you would not see any guru or yogi teaching you meditation wherein they say that do not breathe okay they will associate it with breathing only because whenever you are getting hijacked or you know you are moving away into negativity zone you can tell your brain to focus on the breath right so when meditation so so what you are doing you are creating a disconnect in your negative thought and you start focusing on your breathing pattern right so because of this meditation helps you to calm down right what i do is if something is bothering me i sit and meditate on the question that what is bothering me and i allow my mind to throw up all the questions all the situations all the people around me who are bothering me
and then i when i break my meditation i then introspect to see that okay how can i immune myself so meditation also leads to introspection it is not about controlling thought it is all about being introspective about yourself thank you ma'am uh, those were the questions all the questions thank you for the eye opening and really moving session we really got time to reflect and introspect into ourselves uh, i would now request mr prashant department of political science to please deliver the vote of thanks It's my honor to deliver the vote for this evening. Once again, uh, good evening, all. I would like to thank our resource person, Ms. Veena Jain, for your thoughtful presentation. A special mention to our uh, respected principal, Dr. E. Jerome Xavier, for his uh, support and uh, standing as pillar of strength. With a deep sense of appreciation to our uh, HOD, Ms. Deepa S., and uh, my colleagues for their continuous work. My gratitude to all the participants for uh, gracing the occasion and uh, sharing their opinions today. This program would not have taken place without you, the wonderful audience, for making this program successful. Thank you, one and all. Have a pleasant evening. Thank you so much for having me. It was definitely a wonderful, uh, you know, uh, teamwork. Thank you, sir. So with this, we come to the 